How's it going, everybody? Gabriel Santiago here, and we are back. This is the Speaking of Harmony podcast. This is episode 66. We finally our hibernation, if you will. And it's been a long time since I have done one, but now there's a special motive to bring it back, and I hope to actually keep doing the podcast now on a more constant, you know, regular basis for you guys. Uh, you guys have been uh, writing me, and I really appreciate the feedback about my last arrangement of the great standard, all the things you are. So some of you wanted a really sort of a breakdown and analysis of this arrangement. So here you go. You asked and you shall receive. All right, before we go into that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the little bell thing notification. This is all my social media stuff. You know, uh, support, support the channel and let's get into it. Oh, by the way, if you haven't seen the video yet, for those who just got here, click here on the link over here on the card and then you're gonna see the video and then come back here, right? For those who just watched the video, let's get down to it, right? So let's sort of divide this into different sections, right? So the intro of this is uh, something that I want to do, some kind of an ostinato vibe going on, sort of like a Keith Jarrett thing. He does go into some of those like diatonic things, you know? And it's, some kind of diatonic progression just kind of jam on that I wanted to do that so there's this ostinato in A flat major the key of the other things you are song right so I kind of went into that and then I create this sort of progression here this, this vamp basically based on the less uh, melodies you know the less part of the theme like little variation so I did it uh, Kind of play with the six intervals, right? All right, that kind of vibe. So we're just basically playing around with the ending of all the things you are, but with the pedal on the A flat. Basically, that's where it is, right? what I was doing just kind of playing around but the pedal ostinato thing this a flat ostinato thing pedal just keep going on right all right and at some point I start the theme so the idea of that uh, intro is to actually bring the thing within this ostinato and here's a tricky thing I wasn't really worried about all those like chord changes and different sort of tonal areas that the song go to. I knew that some of those would clash, but that's the idea, is to keep the ostinato throughout the whole thing, right? To play the whole thing with his A flat, sort of hanging on there, right? So some parts will kind of fit the A flat, but then we go to the bridge, it doesn't fit, but that's the sort of the, 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 the tension that I want to portray in that part, right? So I did... right and I go on and that's when it gets really weird because we kind of move into the G major area and we still have that a flat going on so that gets really kind of weird and twisted but I'm going along with it that's the idea right play that theme in G major as the song is but with the A flat hanging on right? and then we had that F sharp half diminished but I kept we get to the E major against that G sharp A flat right and then I get that 
I'll make the triad thing going on with. And here I change that part of the harmony that I'm gonna superimpose later. So I kept the A flat here will be a G sharp here, right? And that's the only time I actually change that note, but the melody is still hanging on the A flat or G sharp. So that's why I kind of still get the same effect. So see, so I got the effect, you know. here and it's all in A flat so it fits nice and then back home like in A flat right I just kind of round it up the tonal thing again and then that's when we're gonna start the song and then I did this little riff on the bass Get kind of the seventh string, just a little arpeggio in A flat, right? Then C louder. Then we're gonna start the theme again now with harmony, and then I was singing the melody, so I was doing. First different chord here. So this chord here, we are in A flat major, right? playing this this can be so many things but you can call this so many things basically right but it starts from just augmenting the chord basically playing uh, a flat uh, major seven sharp five like that sound right instead of this sound going for that sound that's kind of the Bass is the foundation of that of that effect I'm doing here, but I'm adding the six to the chord, right? And major seven, right? But in reality, I'm really superimposing the shape that I like one, two, five, seven shape thing. I talked about in um, different podcast episodes, which is this. I'm superimposing the shape here. I guess it's a flat. So I get this major seven sharp five sound plus that added six. So, right, so I'm doing to come back to C uh, right, that's how the tune goes this would be the five of C right but in my little trick here I use this as a substitute dominant to go to a different place so uh, so I went to F sharp minor 911 so there's a trick that this is a trick that I use all the time a harmony trick thing and you can go back to one of my first episodes podcasts like one of the first ones I talk specifically about that that trick I'm gonna go back and then pin here in the comments so refer back here into the comments of the video a really cool effect that you can go from instead of going to a major chord you can go to like a minor 911 chord a triton away so that's a really cool effect so that's what I did here so And since this melody stays here, I just kind of create this this alternate progression thing to then go back to C minor, which is the next chord, right? Because the original harmony is right. So I did all this stuff 
to come back to C minor. So what I did was F sharp minor 9 11 and then B minor 9 11 E minor 9 11 right and then I create this little riff just to help connecting the dots there and then came back to C minor. So the effect is something like this. Then we're back to the tune here, right? So it's almost like a sort of like push an elastic thing, right? Like I really pushed the tune and went all the way and then came back to it, right? So the effect would be something. back to the you know regular path so C minor as the song goes right E flat uh, on in between these chords I put the you know the substitute domino here the E which is you know pretty common right right and then we go to E flat also in between I put I, I got out of the major seven to a dominant chord just to create a different color there. So, in the A flat, I use that the shaped chord thing, right? So, so I ended up in G major, right? But I move fast to the six, right? To the relative of that. So I did G major, D over F sharp, and then E minor. So I just kind of stayed in G major. I, I mean, I landed there, but then I went away right away to to the six, because that's the base of the like this this the five of A minor. So I just landed there a little early, so I can play E minor and then E seven, the ultra chord to e, A minor. So I could do this by. By the five of A minor here, but you see that I land an E minor first, and then I use the same bass to alter to go to E A, e a minor, right? So. Uh, ready in the second part right so here I use the same a minor but I I start with a, a minor 7 11 and then I put the flat 5 there so it kind of went to a minor 7 chord and then a half diminished type of sound right uh, I sort of like escape to E minor again. Then the two five to E major. There we know the song, right? We landed there. I land there normally, but what happened here is that I put more chords into this transition back to the, the A. So in the regular song, you're gonna do this. A C7, it can be sharp 5 or whatever you want to do there. A C, a C dominant back to F minor. So, on this space, that note, by the way, on this case in E major, the G sharp, but also our A flat, right? That we have been using, which is sort of the main thread into this arrangement. So, this song, this, this note stays down there. So, I use that to put more chords and just keep changing the color and getting more tense, preparing to go to the F minor. Which ended up not even land there at the end. So I go. So this is what I use here. I use E major. Then we did E flat minor 911. So that note here becomes is the third 
third of the chord, major third, then I become the eleventh, then then I did the D nine, you know, thirteenth, and the melody is the extra sharp eleven, right? And then then I did C major seven sharp eleven. So instead of doing the dominant. Right, dominant seven with a sharp five, which will be an augmented triad also, but dominant, I actually use major seven, right? Just to get a different color. Because here, if I just play the triad, I get the same effect of that, you know, that tension to resolve into F minor, you know? That's what I need here. So I can use a dominant or case I use a major 7 which is different from what you would usually do here dominant sharp 5 I use a major 7 sharp 5 and all with G sharp slash A flat on the top so right that's pretty cool then you're back into F minor right but here's another trick. So instead of arriving there, it's it's a little game of like delaying the resolution all the time, right? Because in the beginning of the arrangement, I just stayed like just kind of like home all the time in A flat, A flat, A flat, very diatonic. So to contrast that, during the actual tune, the actual head, I made sure to like delay as much as possible to get into the A flat. So anytime there's something that leans towards resolving into F minor or A flat. I delay as much as I can. So what I did here was this trick of using, which I also talk on other episodes, using the melody to change the call of the chord and keep that same note on top. So instead of landing on F minor, right? And then here, go to B flat minor. As the song goes, what I did was go back to that little figure from from that mid part so instead of playing F minor I play F sharp minor and then it becomes a ninth instead of the minor third right and then instead of playing B flat minor I play B minor so everything is kind of like shifting it just moving up a half step so right so that's what I did but then I'm like I'm pushing, but I'm bringing it back. So I have to bring it back to A flat. So it's like a, a really sort of like slight shift that I'm doing, right? Like sort of elastic, right? I'm just ooh, pushing and pulling back, right? So, and then I, I'm putting the the little melodic counter melody that, I, that I'm playing. So I put that here too. So I'm playing. I had to go back to arriving A flat later, right? So the result would be something like this. Uh, right? I'm back here, B flat, I'm back. Right? And then over here, what I did was just you know, puts a little substitute dominance, just add a little few chords, but still now I'm like within the, you know, the neighborhood of the key, right? Instead of using E flat dominant, I use the substitute dominant, right? A7 here, A9, sharp 11. Instead of landing A flat, I'm doing that weird A flat. Open string to I F G C E over A flat, right? So cool. So then we arrive at in the song we go to uh, you know D flat or C sharp major in this case I think it's D flat major. But 
that's kind of how this song goes. Right, so instead of arriving here on that D flat major, I'm using another thing I use that I also talk in the podcast. So tons of tricks here that I'm using this arrangement. It's all here on this podcast. So don't forget to, you know, go to this playlist and get a lot of these tips that I'm using all here in this arrangement. So instead of using this, that's the trick I use. That's an outro subdominant. So when you have this is the key A flat, this is D flat the fourth, right? So that's the subdominant. If I alter the root of the chord, that's a subdominant sharp one, sharpening the root. So I alter the root and it becomes, it becomes a, a half diminished chord. So that's a cool trick. So instead of going, uh, instead of doing this, I'm doing six so but also not only I'm doing this I'm altering them all a little bit to do this little melodic fragment right reaching the 11th here arriving this is not pojatura by the way I'm also talking about that melodic no harmonic tones go well, back to the podcast I'm talking about those but I'm doing this and then instead of going to D flat minor or D flat minor six. I'm using I'm using G flat sus, which I can also do. I can substitute that D flat minor for G seven D flat sus, right? So, and I'm doing a little riff. Not appoggiatura, by the way. So the that section becomes. Um, and then right originally I would do this that's how it would sound this and then I did That's very different. So then we got into this part, kind of heading into the end, right, of the form. Uh, here you can consider different chords. You know, there's not just debate which chord this one is. Is that a uh, one with the third on the bass, like this, like a flat over C, or is it actually third degree? You know, C minor. You can go both ways. I don't care which one you use, they both fulfill its function, right? Which is sort of this getting to the root, you know, to the tonic zone, right? Uh, so here, uh, you can go this or then you have this diminished chord, this C flat diminished, right? So he got here, uh, back to the back home, right to A flat. So instead of using uh, these chords, what I did was I kind of kept the idea of the uh, A flat kind of with the third in the bass, right? So I use this shape, which is kind of similar to the shape that I use all the time. So this would be something like a um, uh, A flat uh, sus two, right? That's how I would call this. Um, and the bass uh, on the third, right? So it'll be this. So, so I just did this internal voice thing. I'm singing that in the arrangement. And then instead of using that diminished chord here, B diminished or C flat diminished, I tried to do something different. I did another, you know, interesting sounding chords from that family, from that shape, right? It'll be kind of like that. If I would like try to find a way to create, you know, write a chord symbol, again it would be a B major 7 sharp 5 added 6. Or the shape over this, right? It'd be kind of like this. That 
it kind of twists the, the call a little bit, but that's the effect I went for, right? So, so that's the effect, really cool, right? And then, then heading into A flat, right? I'm heading home, the five off, instead of doing, you know, just a E flat seven, I just did the sus. And I put the 13 there, right? The E flat 13 sus. Instead of arriving here at home, I was going to solo over and then I want to prep that, you know, little, you know, getting away, like not delivering the A flat, actually still, you know, that concept of never delivering the root, always sort of extending and postponing that resolution. That's what I was going for this arrangement. So instead of landing and delivering the A flat, I'm actually like extending everything else and setting up the chorus so I can solo, right? So So I did the B B thirteen sus or C flat if you wanna call it this C flat thirteen sus and the A flat is on the top always, right? And then I want to get closer to F minor again, right? So I did C7 sharp 9 flat 13 or sharp 5, however you want to call it, because I want to go here, right? To the top of the form. But what I did is also, again, the same concept, never delivering that F minor. So I go to that half step up thing I was doing, right? And I had to solo over there, which is like really challenging to kind of really tell your story. So it sounds like this. Uh, from that part. Like the end of the melodic, like the melodic part, the segue into the solo. I'm already soloing there, but you see that I still extended that melodic thing over here. And then here, that's kind of how I start soloing really for real, right? But I had to like solo over that stuff. So it's really challenging to make sense of those changes and go through them, right? So, uh, boom, 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 boom. which doesn't land in F, it goes to F sharp, which makes it really demanding because you gotta build it up. So, and right here, I have the F sharp B thing again, but now with the addition of the E minor and then landing C minor. So that's really tough to swallow over there, right? I got that, and then right after it, I have that again to go through it. So, really challenging. So that's pretty much it that I, I do. I do the arrangement, and then. When I go back to that part of the end, I just kind of loop that a little bit so I can do a little turnaround, right? <laughs> and then finally 
I deliver A flat, right? By the deliver, I just kind of get rid of everything. I ended the, the actual solo and the bass, right? And I ended the solo here, and then I go back to the ostinato. And then I got that little, you know, vamp diatonic thing, and then I play again. Here is okay. The storm is over, right? So we back into that diatonic, that little, little home, if you will. So I just kind of play around there to you kind of let this storm pass and get things calmer again, and just basically fade everything away from that craziness, right? That sort of incomplete, impatient kind of, you know, um, impatient kind of like situation where it never resolves into anything. It just keeps going, cycling through different paths and different chords. And then finally we arrive at A flat and then I just kind of like circle back there and just keeps just feeling good there. Um, right? That kind of thing. And then I just end it out of nowhere. Like... super simple diatonic A flat because after you know everything else all this crazy stuff we have to go back to basics and just end in A flat right so that's pretty much it that's the full scope of the arrangement that's the breakdown that's what I use you know you see you notice that a lot of these things I use as concepts I already talked about this on the podcast on different episodes so if you really like these kind of things and and devices to use on your own arrangement of your songs, go back to the podcast and watch this stuff because there's tons of information here in the podcast, right? So if you like that stuff, you know, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, activate the bell and all that, and follow me on the, you know, the social networks and things like that. It really helps to share the video and all that, you know. Also, if you really want a free lesson from me, I'm going to put the link also in the description. You click and then there's a free lesson for you of me talking about really some cool Brazilian guitar stuff and some related harmony things, uh, bossa nova and all that. And there's there's much more coming. So I'm planning to, to put out a bunch of stuff. And, you know, one more time, thank you for your support. Thank you for, you know, keep watching this channel and, and following the content that I'm, I'm putting out. Uh, don't hesitate to comment and ask me if you need any, any more information, anything else and, and topics and things that you want me to discuss in, in you know, next episodes of the podcast. Um, I would love to, to do that. You know, I love to talk. I don't want this video to get that long, but I need to, you know, go deep into this so people can understand exactly what I'm doing, right? So thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, I would love to see your comments and see what you think of it, your suggestions. And I hope to see you on the next episode. All right. Thank you very much. And I see you in the next one. Right. Mm -hmm.